Cheers. Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I am in Osmington Mills, the little village with this uh, delightful partly thatched pub smugglers in to start the South Dorset Ridgeway. It's uh, 13 miles or so sort of going in an arc over the north of Weymouth, in between Weymouth and Dorchester in Dorset probably one of the biggest concentrations of Neolithic monuments outside of Wiltshire, outside of the sort of Stonehenge, Avebury landscape, anywhere in England, I believe. Uh, it is raining right now, but the weather forecast is for it to brighten up a bit later. So I'm going to uh, possibly get under some shelter for a few minutes. Enjoy this delightful pint of uh, Badger's Best Bitter. Does not taste of grapefruit, wonderful. Um, and, uh, and then I'll get on with a walk. It's nice, the pub's got a tarp in the garden. Yeah. The coastal path does in fact seem to go through the pub here. Um, up along there, but uh, South Dorset Ridgeway, I think I need to go up here. There we go, that is the first signpost for the South Dorset Ridgeway I've seen. I'm uh, doing it sort of backwards. Uh, I often seem to do that, I end up doing the Ridgeway backwards, I think. Um, not that it really matters when it's a path or a long distance trail, but uh, it just seemed a bit more sensible to start at Osmington Mills rather than start the other end, West Bexington. But I think probably the official version of the route, that would have been the start. I haven't really shown you the sea yet, have I? I mean, that's. Uh, Tweedy outdoors, pointing at things time. There, that's the sea. This looks like fun. Ah. Pausing briefly here to take in the first ancient monument I've encountered so far on the walk, or at least the first one that's marked on the map. This is Sandy Barrow which is probably a bowl barrow dating it to the uh, likely the Bronze Age, maybe the late Bronze Age. It's already in quite a nice spot. I've already walked, I don't know, 20 minutes, perhaps less, out of the village of Osmington Mills at a very slow pace. Nice sea view there. In the village of Osmington now. Sorry about the car noise. Uh, some very smart thatched cottages here. I, I always think thatched cottages ought to look rustic and tumble down. Nice example there. Come on Tweedy, you're supposed to be out here filming Neolithic monuments. You're going to use all your batteries on thatched cottages. Oh wow, and a little sort of crenellated bit as well. Possibly quite an old sign there because the, uh, the origin of the South Dorset Ridgeway as a, as a trail is that this was the original route of the coastal path, the southwest coastal path, and uh, in 2003, instead, it was rerouted to actually follow the coast uh, around Weymouth. But it's quite a longer, uh, significantly longer route, something like 25 miles uh, for this section around the coast versus 13 if you take the inland Neolithic route. Can you see that through the rain? The Osmington White Horse, quick piece to camera, King George III visited the area 1803. Rare example of a white horse with an actual rider on it. If you can even see it. Fairly muddy today, which is to be expected given the time of year and the amount of rain we've had recently. But um, I think I now have what I anticipate is probably going to be a steepish climb up Osmington White Horse Hill. Is it just called White Horse Hill? So uh, there may be some huffing and puffing about to ensue. Lovely chalky track. And the views are starting to open up a bit now. And obviously it's a gray rainy day. Might get a bit of blue later. Can't quite see the Osmington white horse sort of there-ish, just on the brow of that hill, shoulder of that hill. But, uh, this is pretty nice. Still not quite at the top yet, but the uh, I took a taxi to Osmington Mills and the taxi driver said, when you're out on a walk, every now and again, stop and look behind you. And uh, I think in this kind of landscape, 
got the uh, you know the sea over there and more rolling hills of Dorset. I think that's very good advice. I like the way you can see Osmington sort of snaking up in between those two hills over there. Well, I think I'm at the top of the White Horse Hill and look, blue sky. Just about see the sun over there. The views are opening up, the rain has stopped. Over there in the bay, you can see uh, Portland, the island where a lot of the stone is quarried for some of the government buildings in London, uh, Whitehall and so on. Still on Whitehorse Hill. By the, uh, the fence here, perhaps they're more obvious. Looks like old field boundary markers. I was going to say they're sarsens, but closer up, a bit too thin. Some kind of slate. There's a handful of tumuli marked on the OS map here. It doesn't say much about them other than that. This one's nicely covered in daisies as well. A nice touch. That's just about flat enough on top for a wild camp, but far too early in the day for that. It's an even better view to Portland now and uh, the sprawl of Weymouth and surrounding towns and villages. It's nice and this glimmering dew pond, I don't know if it's a dew pond, somebody's made a sort of cairn. Particularly evocative looking barrow over here with, uh, I'm guessing that's a hawthorn tree, I can't see, it's a bit of a distance away, growing out the side of it. A lot of these barrows seem to have a view over to Portland, I, you know, makes you wonder if, I, I guess this is again Bronze Age. Lovely old hawthorn tree. I'm assuming this is also Bronze Age, like the one back there, and uh, perhaps Portland with its uh, stone quarries was already in use back then. Just spotted the ribbons tied onto this hawthorn tree. It's just going into bud. The wind slayer, the windshield thing that I have my GoPro wrapped up in is um, starting to fall apart. I'm uh, slightly concerned the uh, microphone's not very well covered. Apologies if in this video it's uh, a bit of wind noise. I have a feeling that patch of blue sky and sunshine may have been short-lived. Still a bit of blue sky over there, uh, but uh, definitely clouding over again now. The sky's going a, a worrying grey. I suspect another shower is on its way, but that's all part of it and I'm really enjoying this walk. This is very nice. So um, over there is Chalbury Hillfort, how that's pronounced correctly. It's, uh, it's Iron Age. Uh, the, the South Dorset Ridgeway, the, the route of the trail doesn't cross directly over the top of it. So I'm considering making a detour, but I'll see how I feel when I get a bit closer. And part of the decision there will be whether those blobs I can see on the hillside there, I think they're sheep given the color, unless they're some sort of very pale colored cows. And if I have to cross through a field of cows, I'll perhaps, uh, I'll perhaps give it a miss. One of those confusing bits here where the, um, the walking route splits off from the, um, the, the sort of bridleway. So I'm going to follow the walking route. So it may get a bit closer to uh, Chalbury Hillfort then. Only really crossing this road, but I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that is quite a nice country lane in terms of the view. We're going over this way. Yes, the, uh, the walking route as opposed to the uh, bridle route, which I'd plotted on the map when I was planning the route, uh, does go a bit closer to Chalbury, to Chalbury Hillfort. There it is over there. Uh, and that, that'll do me. That's close enough. Um, you know, I, I think I'm going to save the detours for um, anything Bronze Age or later. Iron Age, I'm afraid, just isn't going to cut it. Sorry, Chalbury. Should have had the foresight to have been built a thousand years earlier. As the guy in the taxi said, look behind you. Nice. You see down to the sea there. I am taking a slight detour here from the uh, the route from the trail, which is uh, the track goes down the side of the hill there. These are, uh, excuse me, slightly out of breath, Binkham Bumps. And one of the legends associated with Binkham Bumps is that this is the hill 
that was referred to in the Grand Old Duke of York, the nursery rhyme, who had 10,000 men and apparently, if you believe it, marched them up to the top of this hill. When they're up, they're up. When they were down, they were down, etc. I mean, in reality, they're probably more Bronze Age bowl barrows, but what an incredible, incredible view. Um, one of the other legends is that apparently if you put your ear to the ground, you can hear music. Should we test that? Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and Weird, there's a helicopter hovering overhead. I'm fairly sure I'm allowed to be here, it's open access land. Perhaps the helicopter is a far more upmarket version of Tweedy Outdoors that does tours of Neolithic landscapes by helicopter. It's the final of Bink and Bumps. As, as barrows go, if these are bowl barrows, they're, they're pretty large. I don't know if you can get a sense of scale on the screen easily. This one looks like it's partly collapsed in the middle as well. And that's the view out the other side. Slightly spoiled by that radio transmitter, mobile phone tower, whatever it is. And that's the view back out to the sea. What a spot. If I were a uh, Bronze Age chieftain, wouldn't mind being interred here. Not bad. Sorry about the ongoing on helicopter, ongoing helicopter noise. Um, this is a pretty steep hill though, actually. If uh, I can understand where the uh, the legend about the Grand Old Duke of York comes from. I don't know if you're getting a sense of that from the uh, the GoPro. It's got a bit of a wide angle lens, hasn't it? So it's probably distorting it all, but um, that would be a fairly extreme hedge. Hedge? That would be a fairly extreme hill to go sledging down in the winter. I don't know if you can see that, but it's almost slightly terraced. There's kind of steps in it, and it's interesting how the daisies only grow on the relatively flat bits on the steps. Bloody helicopter still there, but uh, anyway, yes, quite a steep hill. Grand Old Duke of York marching his man up and down. It would have probably been quite a palaver. Still here, the helicopter. Coming into the village of Binkham now. Uh, tiny, as far as I can see from the map, but it has this uh, rather neat little church and uh, some attractive stone cottages. Football! Football, football! Sorry if this footage is a bit grainy. Bit of a bit of a slog getting out of Binkham. Lovely views of uh, rolling hills. Now though, uh, heading along this track. Not exactly sure where it leads, but it's somewhere on the... Oh look, some birds hovering, probably just a couple of pixels. As always, I'm going to say they're red kites. <sighs> Don't actually know. That's a little glint of sunlight there. There's a golf course in there and uh, the bumps you can see in the distance are not... Uh, not bunkers or whatever you call them in golf terminology, you can tell I'm not a golf player. In fact, barrows have been incorporated into that golf course. I wonder how you would feel if you'd been a person of some importance in the Bronze Age. And then a couple of thousand years later to find there you are, buried on a golf course. Leaving that stretch of road and the golf course <laughs> behind now uh, and heading across this field. A couple more barrows here, thankfully not on a golf course, although a bit close to that transmitter station over there, so it's like spoils the Atmos. More of those glorious sea views. I suppose it's a bit like the um, hill figures in a way. Sometimes you can appreciate the sea if you've got a bit more distance from it. quick for me to get on camera but this area is riddled with rabbits I don't know if you can see those off in the distance I keep dashing away as soon as I get close a very weathered sign telling you about barrows and uh, oh even some uh, some viking history there probably a bit too weathered to read I've just crossed over the uh, the railway tracks it's some um, the, the path here uh, 
crosses over the top and the railway that I came in on from London to Weymouth um, is actually going under a tunnel here so that was kept nicely out of view. There is now a road unfortunately which is less hidden but um, can't have everything. You can see Dorchester in the distance there and um, somewhere between here and Dorchester is uh, Maiden Castle. I thought it was to the left of the, uh, perhaps I'm looking slightly the wrong direction. As paths crossing busy A roads go, it's one of the more pleasant examples I've seen. Even some, um, some daffodils look. How nice. That's a sad sight. Hawthorn tree blown over. Bit of a sort of a slightly bleaker section of the South Dorset Ridgeway now. It's sort of a bit more agricultural after crossing that road back there. Um, but uh, hopefully some more barrows and things to come. There's Maiden Castle now. So across this field, uh, the sort of far well, the first line of hill, uh, you, it's, just, it's in the shade of uh, a cloud at the moment, but you can just about see the, uh, the sort of embankments of uh, Maiden Castle over there. I considered making a, uh, a detour to go and visit it properly, but uh, perhaps it is deserving of a proper visit in its own right at some later date. And besides that, my shoulders are starting to hurt. Anyway, in the meantime, there's another barrow and a very smart looking dry stone wall. Definitely packed a bit too um, opposite of lightly heavily uh, today. The, uh, the backpack is wearing on my shoulders a bit, but uh, I think potentially the uh, end is in sight for today's walk. I, I was thinking of aiming for uh, Broncombe Hill, but it does kind of depend how uh, well suited the vicinity seems to be for uh, wild camping. If, uh, if it looks a bit too exposed or uh, you know, not stealthy enough, then I may have to push on to a uh, hardy monument, which you can probably just about see on the uh, horizon over there, and try around there instead. Yet another barrow. Probably can't see the, uh, the moon up there. Twin barrows here, a pair of them, and um, the path goes in between them. Piles of stone here. I assume they're going to be rebuilding that dry stone wall over there. This is the start of Broncombe Hill, or at least the uh, the open access land bit of Broncombe Hill. I'm probably I was on the slopes of it before, but uh, uh, yes, let's have an explore. These are a bit unfortunate, giant tanks of something or other. They really need to be there. There's some sort of agricultural facility over there. I'm not sure what these are for. Um, but hopefully we can get beyond this and it'll start to feel a bit more ancient. Here we are on Broncombe Hill, not much in the way of uh, Bronze Age earthworks yet. A couple of uh, sort of hollows back there, possibly, I don't know, collapsed tumuli or something, but um, so far, a lot of gorse bushes. I think we're into the uh, the more barrowy bit of Broncombe Hill. Very deep hollow there. It goes down a long way, and uh, I'm sure we can pick that out, but. Uh, monument over there. That is a bit more than a hollow, that's practically a cave. It's one of the most prominent barrows on Broncombe Hill. Quite a view from here. very prominent barrow there, it appears to have a uh, sort of an outer ditch. So is that, I think I saw mention that there were, um, there, there is a, a, a twin bowl barrow, so I don't know if that's, that's it. Uh, that's quite, quite an earthwork. 